Hello everybody, my name is of course Brian Downing. Today in this particular video I am going to show you the first section of our algorithmic trading series on various column sections, courses, what may have you. There's going to be four presented, probably a fifth one at the end of it, which will tie everything together on how to build an algorithmic trading system built specifically around an easy language like Python, which is open source, as well as it's free. So let's introduce you to the very first part before we get into the actual strategies uh, that we'll use. Because over the next few weeks to months, we'll be using uh, about three different strategies combined in this one entire system that will cover pretty well all the major asset classes that you want to have as part of your independent trading system. So again, this is the infrastructure. This is These are the building blocks. These are the things that you will use to help you build out any type of trading system. Okay, so first of all, let me just say this, is that over the last five years, I've looked at many, many different programming languages. I'm going to introduce you to the pros and the cons of each. Now, everything is going to be broken down to modules, as I've hinted at in a previous video. So this is what we're going to do, week by week by week. So in the very first week, we're going to talk about just a rough overview of my five-year journey at looking at just how do you look at algorithmic trading? How do you look at how to automate those trades um, in all the different technologies, operating systems, programming languages, what are what works and what doesn't work and why. I'll also introduce you to the difference between an interpreted language and a compiled language. I'll also talk about prototyping for research. I'll also talk about quote unquote compiled languages for trading systems. So that's the first week. Second week is we're going to focus on probably most likely and pretty well 100% chosen the programming language I'm going to choose and the, and the language that I want to focus on to make it real easy because a lot of people that come into my website at quantlabs.net or my meetups, my YouTube channel or whatever social media, a lot of people, about 75%, have no idea how to set this stuff up. And a lot of them don't have an understanding of programming or may have not looked at programming for years or whatever. We're going to talk about Python, why we use and why we choose Python. Obviously, I'm going to talk about the advantages. I'm going to talk about all the resources to get you up and running to learn about programming specifically in Python. I want you to understand, do not be scared of this language. It's fairly easy to understand. In actual fact, as, as families are starting to realize for the future of their kids, they realize that kids are needing to be educated around the world of computer science. Especially in China, they're teaching kids at the age of eight and teaching them Python. Why Python? Because it's a fairly easy language to absorb. So I don't understand why an adult cannot learn Python as well. Now, the obvious hard part uh, I found was, was setting up your environment. I'm going to show you some various videos that I've got uh, to get you up and running to set up your environment. Um, it, it, regardless of what operating system you're running on. If you're Windows, Mac, OS 10, or Linux, I'll have a variety of resources and vi videos to, to re point you to, to to get you up and running. The other thing we need to talk about is the Python packages, specifically in the world of, call it big data, data science, all the popular ones that we'll be focusing on. And that's the other nice thing about Python as well, because there's probably only really three or four that you'll use at least for the beginning, at least for the beginning of this course. Now, the other thing we'll be talking about is something about databases. A lot of my Python scripts that I'll be introducing you to, uh, namely, let's say in the arbitrage strategy, it's gonna leverage, uh, leverage a lot of uh, data and that database has to be uh, fairly cheap, fairly advanced, fairly blah, blah, blah. So I've chosen Mongo DB, and we're going to 
talk about NoSQL databases versus the traditional relationship databases like Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, and even, dare I say, SQL Server. Um, specifically in this particular module, I want to talk about how we're using Mongo for storage. Uh, I want to get uh, you on a set of resources to help you set up your environment. And also, Mongo has a database server engine that you use, that you use your programming client code, specifically in Python, that will connect into that database. So I'm going to show you code demos that will insert, upgrade, and remove data. And those are, again, are all part of my Python scripts that I use in the algorithmic tr uh, trading system that I will be a demoing uh, throughout the different uh, strategies that I'm working on and currently have finished up on my phase one, specifically the arbitrage. Now, there's another NoSQL database that I'm using as well called Redis. I've used it for a few years. By no means, I'm an expert. It's considered probably one of the world's fastest uh, databases for high speeds specifically. So we, from there, we can build out some really nice message queuing between, let's say, your client code and maybe uh, a listener component that will listen to the markets through something like Interactive Brokers. Um, so I'm going to show you some demos on how to build that out and also be showing you some Python demos uh, related around Redis as well. Now, the other thing is there's a lot of confusion about which trading broker to go with. Um, you know, specifically where I'm at in Canada, there's very few programmatic uh, brokers that you can use for trading, for automated trading to build algos around. Um, and pretty well, it's universal that Interactive Brokers is the broker that's used throughout whatever region you are. If you're in Asia, Europe, North America, South America, wherever else in between, the, this is the broker that pretty well everyone uses. Um, and unless you're going into like high frequency trading, uh, that's another level that most people will never achieve, especially when they're starting out. And even to get in that range, you've got to have a large account of probably half a million dollars. So a lot of us don't have that yet. We're working on that, obviously, and hopefully we'll get there. But for now, Interactive Brokers is your best broker. Um, so I'll show some of the pros of the software that comes with or is used with Interactive Brokers uh, using TWS, also uh, Trader Workstation. Now, the nice thing about Interactive Brokers, you can get full capabilities of using TWS with a demo account. I don't right now have a, a live uh, trading account with Interactive Brokers, but yet I can still play around with TWS. I can still play around with the APIs that I, I, Interactive Brokers gives you. Of course, from there, we'll talk about the API choices. Uh, I'm going to show you some demos in Java, C++. And of course, specifically, we'll focus on Python a package called IBPy, which um, en enables you to connect inter interactive brokers via Python. So that's what we're going to focus on for this module. From there, the, the other uh, module that we need to obviously talk about, where we, we, we are going to use um, free data, uh, uh, Yahoo Finance is pretty well perfect for um, like we'll call it end of day trading. Our frequency is going to be pretty well end of day or, or me medium frequency. But because you get the source code, because you get the the uh, scripts, you can control how frequently you want to listen to the markets and how frequently you want to trade. But for now, uh, we will keep it very low frequency. And I'll obviously, I'll have some demos available. I'll show off through uh, Python again uh, to hook into and to download data with Yahoo Finance. From there, we get into the pretty looking charts that everybody wants. Um, I'm gonna introduce you to probably the two Python packages that I like. Obviously, there's the most popular one called Matplotlib. Uh, so I'll give you an overview of that. I won't get into too much detail in that because on my next section, uh, the arbitrage strategy will really focus a lot on Matplotlib. So there'll be lots of demos in that. But the other, uh, a charting package a lot of people don't seem to know about within the world of Python is Pi Qt graph, and that's using Qt, which I'll introduce in a second. Um, but I'll show you some demos with that in Python. Now, in week eight, uh, some people will want to see a front end set of options. I'm not going to be designing front ends at this point, but I will highlight some of the capabilities of using a framework that's open well, not really open source, but it, it is free. Um, 
where you, you can use Qt, YQt uh, because it's, it's cross-platform, meaning it could be run on Windows, Linux, Mac, and um, anything in between as well. Um, now, there's a tool that they have called Qt Designer, and the cool thing about it is that you can play around if you are familiar with, let's say, Visual Studio or any uh, WYSIWYG, uh, what you see is what you get kind of editor. Uh, you can play around with it, but with the Qt Designer, you can also run a utility with the Qt Designer and generate Python code from that. So that's really cool. So show that off. And that pretty well is the, the entire uh, series I'm going to show about infrastructure to get you started before you start working into the trading strategies themselves. And again, there's going to be three. There's going to be the first one, which is arbitrage. The second one, which is going to be more algorithmic based. That's going to focus on futures and options. And the last one's going to focus on FX, Forex, and um, all the uh, algorithms that come with that and different ways to use uh, macroeconomic government data to assess the, the direction on which way their currency is going to go and be able to trade that off against another currency as well and be able to obviously uh, showcase the opportunities that come with that in the world of FX. So that's pretty well it for this section in the um, infrastructure and uh, hopefully uh, we'll get this started really soon. I'm actually going to put together a date, another video and talk about that. And, uh, but that's the order we're going in. And let me just do a recap here. So we're doing, uh, hang on here. Okay. So again, we'll do our, uh, which programming language in week one, week two, why Python, the pros and cons of it, some resources. Then we'll get into some database technology, specifically around no SQL. We'll talk about MongoDB. We'll also talk about Redis uh, as well in week four. Week five, we'll talk about interactive brokers, our chosen uh, broker. Uh, week six, we'll do some demos around Yahoo Finance, which is obviously free. And then we'll get into some charting stuff on the different uh, Python packages that are available. Uh, again, open source and free. And of course, we talked about some of the options that you can get using something like Qt Designer um, and be able to design some pretty cool looking uh, uh, front ends. Okay, so that's pretty well it. Hopefully uh, you can join us and uh, learn from it. And when we go week by week, the big advantage of this is to do the live question and answer. That's the whole point. All right, talk to you later.